There was nothing to fear for the man was always so gentle, so kind. At night, when the little girl and her brother were bathed in the light of the big shaded bulb, the man would knock gently on the door and come in, the rest of him in shadow. The little girl and her brother would look up at him where they sat at the big table, their eyes bright in the bright light. They waited for him every evening as they sat at their lessons. He'd nod his head to say one was right and shake it to say one was wrong. It was not always that he came. They could remember perhaps two weeks when he remarked to their mother that he had never seen two children looking so smart. Two children. One a girl of seven and a boy of eight. Their mother saw them with eyes that held pride and to partly gloss over the maternal coating and answer to his praise. But their homework. They are so lazy with them, he offered help and the team rested there. In those days, the rage was for pencils. School children always have rages going at one time or another. The Japanese bazaars promoted a rage for those. At this particular time, it was for pencils. Pencils big but light in circumference, not smaller than a man's thumb. In rages, one kept a collection. Four or five pencils of different colors to dangle from one's book basket to arouse the envy of other children who probably possess less. Add to the man's gentleness and kindness in knowing a child's desires, he promised that he would give each of them not one but two. And for the little girl who he said was very bright and deserved more, he would get the biggest pencil he could ever find. One evening, he did bring them. The evenings of waiting had made them look forward to this final giving, and when they got the pencils, they whooped with joy. The little boy had two pencils, one green and one blue. The little girl had three pencils, two of the same circumferences as the little boys, but colored red and yellow. And the little girl jumped up and down and shouted with glee, until their mother called from down the stairs. What are you shouting about? And they told her, shouting gladly, Vicente, for that was the name. Vicente had brought the pencils he had promised. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The little boy smiled and said, thank you. And the little girl smiled and said, thank you too. But the man said, Aren't you going to help me for those pencils? No, no. Boys do not have boys, okay? The little boy laughed and hugged him anyway. The man's arm tightened suddenly about the little girl until she squirmed out of his arms and laughed a little breathlessly, disturbed but innocent, looking at the man with a smiling little question of puzzlement. All through the day, they had been very proud in school, showing off their brand new pencils. And their mother had finally to tell. Oh, stop it! What will you do with so many pencils? You can only write one at a time. And as we send them for more. He's only a bus conductor. Don't ask him for too many things. People like those, they make friends with people like us, and they feel it is nice to give us gifts, children, toys, and things. They think we wouldn't be able to afford it. 
the man probably needed a new job and was softening his way to by going at the chimney like right that. No, I don't think so. He's rather a queer young man. I think he doesn't have many friends, but I have watched him with the children and he seems to dote on them. The father granted again but did not pay any further attention. Vicente was earlier than usual that evening. The children immediately put their lessons down, telling him of the envy of their friends, telling him would he buy them more. Our classmates loves our utensils. Yes, and our classmates are very envious. Oh, perhaps you can get me a glass of water. Will you buy us more pencils? Oh, of course. I will buy you more pencils as many as you want. Oh, then I will tell my friends and they will envy me for they don't have many or as few. Vicente took the girl up lightly in his arms and held her to sit down on his lap and he said, What are your lessons for tomorrow? This is my lesson. Then go ahead and write. I will watch you. Don't hold me. I am heavy. You will get tired. The man shook his head and said nothing but held her on his lap just the same. The girl jumped up off his lap and stood frightened of him. Mother coming out of the door, Vicente snatched the papers on the table and held them to his stomach. Oscar, go to your room. The mother looked at him, stopped in her tracks, and advanced into the light. She had been in the shadow. Her voice had been like a bell of safety to the little girl, but now she advanced into the glare of the light. Go upstairs. Finally, the woman raised her hand and slapped him full hard in the face. With her other hand, she slapped him on the other side of the face again. Alternately, she lifted her right hand and made him retreat before her. She had been in the shadow. Her voice had been like a bell of safety to the little girl, but now she advanced into the glare of the light. The girl was to remember the touch of that hand on her shoulder, heavy, kneading at her flesh, the woman herself, stricken almost dumb, but her eyes eloquent with that angered fire. When her mother reached her, the woman held her hand out to the child, always also with a terrible indelibility that one associates with terror. Her mother presided over the bath that the little girl took, scrubbed her and soap her, and then wiped her gently all over and changed her into new clothes that smelled of the clean fresh smell of clothes that had hung in the light of the sun. And taking the little girl by the hand, she led her to her little girl's bed, made her lie down and tucked the covers gently about her as the girl dropped off into quick slumber. Ano yung rate mo dun sa dalawang anak ko na tutoran?
Sige, bababa ko para sa'yo ang nilang 3,000. 3,000 fix na yun? Sa... Fix na yun. Kaya nga lang, 3,000 siya per head. Kasi mayilikot yung anak mo eh. Ang ihingay. 3,000 per head. Hindi kaya ng anak ko. Um, Professional kong doktor ako eh. Kaya bawal yun. <laughs> bawal yun sa akin kasi malakit <laughs> yun. So, papatutoran ko sana sa'yo yung anak ko. Okay po, um, ilan sila? Dalawa po ang anak ko. Okay. Magkano po ang rate niyo? Mm, ilan yung babae niyo? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Gusto pa ba ng lapis? Yes po, teacher. Hindi, hindi lang kita bukas ng isa. Yay! Ikaw, ikaw! Medyo akbayan mo siya, Lester. Ay pa, ganyan. <laughs> Malapit kayo sa kanya, hindi kayo parang ilang sobrang lapit niya. Oo. Oh, oh. ah, gusto ko ba ng lapis? Ato. Sige, bigyan kitang ball pen. Nakangiti. Gusto ko ba ng lapis? Okay, sulat. Durban. Okay, sulat. Game. Vicente! Yeah. <laughs> oh, this. Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Aren't you going to... <laughs> Aren't you going to hug me? For those pens? Wait, I'm going to hug you. Aren't you going to hug me for those pencils? No, no! <laughs> Aren't you going to hug me for those pencils? No! No! <laughs> Aren't you going to kiss me for those pencils? Kiss me now! Aren't you going to hug me for those pencils? No, no! <laughs> Aren't you going to hug me for those pencils? No! No! <laughs> Aren't you going to hug me for those pencils? Oh no no! Boys, do not hug boys! Okay? Okay. Hey, say, na. <laughs> Aren't you going to hug me for those pencils? Hmm? Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Pasok na Jamilu. Oh no. Oh no. I oh no. The man probably needed a new job and was softening his way. To buy going pala sa Pasok lang, sir. Hey, kid. Our classmates loves our new pencils. Yes, and our classmates are very envious. Oh, perhaps you can get me a gut. <laughs> will you buy us more pencils? Of course. I will buy you more pencils as many as you want. Oh, then... 
I will tell my friends and they will envy me. And... <laughs> Will you buy us more pencils? Oh, of course. I will buy you more pencils, as many as you want. Oh, then I will tell my friends and they will envy me as... Thank <laughs> you. 